Charlie Taylor and welcome to chapter four. This chapter is one of the two longest, so I'd like to jump right in. While I'll be showing you some pictures of wiretaps that also use transmitters in this chapter, I'll be primarily discussing devices that are designed to pick up room conversations. These little eavesdropping devices are what most of us refer to as bugs and are most commonly used in short-term eavesdropping operations. Many of these devices are also referred to as leave-behinds because if it's battery operated, the bad guys may simply abandon the bug once the battery has died rather than risk another entry into the target's office or home. Of course, not all bugs are left to run on batteries alone, and we'll talk about these in a few minutes. Let me start by discussing why a radio transmitter might be used versus another form of attack. First and foremost, they're probably the easiest to purchase and then to hide. And the technical capabilities of the eavesdropper really don't need to be all that sophisticated. For example, you can buy a Nokia or a Siemens cell phone, which has been modified for specific use as an eavesdropping device. It can dial out and receive calls like any other mobile phone. However, programmable options can be set so that the cell phone will respond as an eavesdropping device when called from a specific number. When dialed from that number, the cell phone automatically answers without ringing and without any changes to the cell phone display, except that it begins to operate as a speakerphone. In other words, it works and acts like a normal cell phone except when dialed from that pre-programmed number. Companies selling the cell phone market it as an eavesdropping device that you can give to your spouse so that you can eavesdrop on him or her anytime or anywhere, whether they're at home, in the office, or a hotel room. Let your imagination take it from there. Anyway, they also market this as a unique device for leaving behind after a meeting. I hope this little clip gets you thinking because now we're going to jump right into the devices that can and are used for surreptitious eavesdropping. There are dozens of so-called spy shops which sell small radio transmitters located across the country and even more of them on the internet. The first question you may have is well, how can they sell illegal eavesdropping devices? The answer is pretty simple actually and straightforward. Many listening devices typically only become illegal when you use them illegally. For example, it's legal to own a gun. It's only when you use it illegally, such as using it to rob a bank, that it becomes a legal issue. In other words, some of these devices are not typically illegal to own, just illegal to use for eavesdropping on someone without their permission. Wow, that statement probably opened up a whole can of worms, but don't worry, in a later chapter I'll discuss the more relevant legal issues surrounding eavesdropping. Radio transmitters typically come in three flavors, the really amateur types of devices, the semi-pro types, and the real professional types. The amateur devices can be readily purchased at stores such as Radio Shack or countless other electronic stores. They're usually marketed as entertainment items, wireless babysitters, and wireless intercoms. The price range for these types of devices are from $7 for a do-it-yourself kit to about $200. So let's talk a little bit about each of these types of devices. One of the oldest devices in this category is a small FM wireless microphone that transmits its radio signals over the same radio frequencies used by a standard FM radio like the one you have in your car. While you can buy these devices already assembled, these types of devices are more commonly built from kits and parts that you can buy from most any electronic store. The picture in your screen is one of these types of devices. And if you use the 9-volt battery connector as a reference point, then you will understand how small these devices are. The limitation on these types of devices, or at least on most of them, is that they only have a very short transmission range, typically in the 50 to 80 foot range, and also drift in frequency. See, I have to adjust the radio receiver occasionally to pick up the best signal. But just because they're short range transmitters doesn't mean they're not a real threat. They are frequently used when someone wants to eavesdrop on a target in the next room or in an adjacent office. I know if I had a competitor next door on the floor above or below me, then I would be concerned that this type of simple eavesdropping bug could be used. One of my favorite war stories involves a case where a secretary was using this type of device to eavesdrop on her boss. It turned out that she, that's right, she, was secretly having an affair with the boss's wife. 
and they were looking for evidence that would help them in a divorce case. Or at least that was their story. Anyway, the secretary had access to the office to change out the batteries, and the device was very easy for her to hide. Believe it or not, these types of radio bugs are very difficult to quickly detect when used in a major city. This is especially true if it's used in a high-rise building, since the higher you go, the stronger the FM signals are from local radio stations. The little black boxes that are sold as transmitter detectors by most spy shops are pretty much worthless for detecting these type of devices. Today, several companies market a wireless transmitter designed to work with a digital tape recorder with the FM radio receiver built into the same package as the tape recorder. The system sells for about $150 and is marketed by some companies over the internet specifically for surreptitious eavesdropping. The wireless microphones that are sold for a speaker to wear, such as the one that I'm wearing, is the second category I'd like to discuss. These devices are typically crystal controlled and have a much longer transmission range of typically up to a few hundred feet. The Federal Communications Commission specifies which radio frequencies can be used for these types of devices, and they're typically very easy to detect. However, let me share, share an interesting story with you about these types of wireless microphones. I received a call from an attorney whose client had been told that someone over two miles from his offices had intercepted a complete board meeting's conversations over the radio waves. Anyway, I traveled to the city in question and found that the company occupied the top two floors of the tallest building in the area. It turned out that the wireless microphone used by a speaker was left on after his presentation. In other words, they were bugging themselves and simply weren't aware of it. Now, if you're thinking these guys were really stupid, then you're wrong. These board members were pillars of industry and very, very smart people. They simply aren't trained to think about how radio transmitters can be used for eavesdropping. The next category is wireless intercoms, which typically come in two varieties. The type that transmit their signals over the open airwaves on very high radio frequencies, and the type that transmit their signals over the power lines at a very low frequency. The type that transmits over the open airwaves can be very dangerous, since those that use them may be literally bugging themselves. Let me share another story with you so you'll better understand how wireless babysitter and intercom systems can be a real threat. An old friend of mine who was the chief of a police for a very small and yet very affluent suburb called me one day and asked for a favor. He had a super rich resident who was convinced that his house was bugged and demanded that the chief find the debugging device. Well, to help out my friend, I went and did a TSEM sweep. About an hour into my sweep, I picked up room conversations that were not originating from the resident's house. So being the good citizen, the chief and I spent the next three or four hours locating the source of the room conversations and the radio transmitter. It turned out that the house where the radio transmission was originating from was a few blocks away and belonged to one of the U.S. attorneys, and that the device was a wireless babysitter located in the baby's room upstairs. Ironically, all the conversations